And so suddenly, you start talking about, obviously, Lone Star, yep. Ryan, um, Alvin Shadow Creek, uh, teams like Lufkin. Lufkin. Team Angleton. Angleton. Um, you start looking at these teams in 5A Division One. Uh, Hutto. Yeah, Hutto. Richmond Foster. Mm-hmm. Uh, San Antonio Wagner. Wagner. You yep. can start dreaming on a team from Region 4. Lancaster, if maybe. There, yeah, if there's not this team at the top. And all this did was put a little blood on the throne and say, all right, it's game on. Mm-hmm. It is game on in mm-hmm. 5A Division One, And in one game, the entire shape of the of the division changed. Mm-hmm. Again, nobody is piling dirt on Highland Park. Sure. Okay? They're going to be fine, and they're going to be in the mix, and it wouldn't be a surprise if they won another title. Right. But we now know that they are not invincible, and that opens up 5A Division One in a lot of fun ways. Uh, thought number two, jury's still out. And I'm talking about college football in this one. And there's a few different squads I want to talk about. One is TCU. TCU goes on the road and beats Purdue. More like per don't. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> Get out of the studio. He's walking off on that one. Uh, yeah, gr- yeah, for all the podcasts, he just threw his headphones down and just... <laughs> the skip. Yes. Oh, no. Yes. Ugh. It, that's too much for a Monday. <laughs> Get that out of here on a Monday. They beat Purdue. <laughs> and they do it in a really impressive fashion. Um, that was impressive to go on the road and beat a Big Ten team. I uh, hate you. Uh, <laughs> there, uh, there was SMU. SMU, I know you were at the game. Yeah. Texas State. Yeah. Uh, but they, I mean, you. I think you have to admit they looked pretty darn impressive. Oh, they did. I know you were on the wrong side of it. Oh, they were so good. Uh, and it wasn't even that Shane Bichel was great. He was fine. He threw two picks. Were pretty mm-hmm. kind of. I think that was more of Texas State's defense were actually being really good this season. But they ran the ball insanely well. T.J. McDaniel had not played all season. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. By the way, remember me from South Lake Carroll? Rushing yeah. 2,000 yards last year. Absolutely. Tortex State, a new one. Um, we knew about Kamon Freeman. We knew about Xavier Jones. But now they have a third option in the backfield. And it's like they, the ground game is – I mean, the defense probably got – tired because you know the offense tech state's offense can do anything Mm -hmm. but the fact that smu's rushing game was what won them this game and won it decisively Mm -hmm. that's incredible and then there's two teams that that were on the wrong end that i would would highlight one is texas tech Mm -hmm. uh and after two weeks of doing nothing but just throwing flowers at the feet of matt wells and 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 the red raiders yeah they go out there and just straight up lay an egg against arizona if you didn't stay up for it if you're a fan of football in this state, you didn't miss much. Nope. It was Alan Poma was not good. Um, and they abandoned the run. And the defense is actually okay, but, like, I don't know. There's that. <laughs> and then there's the other thing. The other one that, uh, that springs to mind is Houston, mm-hmm. which is, you know, they play Washington State. They were basically beat by two touchdowns. They scored a late garbage time touchdown to, mm-hmm. to make it a little interesting there at the very end. But, but fundamentally, they, they lost by two touchdowns. And, and I think for all four of those teams, I would say let's pump the brakes on any sort of overreaction to that. Sure. Yes, TCU looked good. Yes, SMU looked good. Yes, Houston struggled at times, although they hung with them for a bit. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I mean, that game was, I, I expected a lot worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So. And then Tech looked terrible. Yeah. For all of them, I would say we don't necessarily know. Um, and in a lot of ways, there's some teams that we're going to find out a lot about this week, uh, um, the, specifically Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. Texas A&M plays Auburn, and this is the first swing game. Yep. I think everyone and their dog could have predicted that Texas A&M would be 2-1 right now. Yep. Okay? Beat Texas State, all due respect. Mm. They beat Texas State, they beat <laughs> Lamar, right? Yep. And they'll lose, out, lose to, to Clemson. I think everybody could chalk that out. Yep. Now, now comes the turn, and so it's going to be really interesting. So the jury's still out for me in college football. And thought number three... 2A Division II calamity. Oh, man. I don't... I literally do not know the last time this happened. Eight of the top 10 teams in 2A Division II lost. Eight. But here's the funny thing. I don't know if any of them are upsets. I don't know if any of them are upset. Because no. every single one of them lost to a team bigger than them. Yep. Every one of them. Hamlin lost to Holly. That's a 2A Division II losing to a 2A Division one. Franklin lost, or Mart lost to Franklin. Yes. That's a 2A Division II losing to a 3A. Mm-hmm. They lost last year. They lost last year. Albany lost to Eastland, a 3A. Mm-hmm. Uh, Grapeland lost to Crockett, a good 3A. Um, Wellington lost to Abernathy, a 3A. 3A? Yeah, 3A. Yeah, 3A. Thank you. Thank you. My point is, 
that we have complete and total chaos in 2A Division 2. And that was the rankings that I think people are going to cock an eyebrow at whenever they come out because there's no good thing to do. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you that we were extremely thoughtful about our rankings. I promise you we did, just, we did think about this. But in the end, our goal is to say who are the strongest teams. And boy, it sure seemed like it was wide open on Friday night with an absolute craziness going on in uh, 2A Division 2. Three helmet stickers. A helmet sticker for West Texas quarterback Avian Cruz. He ran 21 times for 372 yards and six touchdowns and added a passing touchdown out there in Stinnett. That's West Texas high quarterback Avian Cruz. A helmet sticker to SMU running back TJ McDaniel in his first collegiate game <laughs> goes nuts. At one point, he had like eight carries yeah. for like 160 yards and three touchdowns. And these weren't huge holes he was running through. He was making moves. He was bouncing off tacklers. It was, it was an impressive it performance. It was really impressive. And Dallas Carter defensive end Randy Anthony had 11 tackles, eight tackles for loss, four sacks, two forced fumbles, and a safety. A helmet sticker for Dallas Carter defensive end Randy Anthony. Three teams to watch. Rockdale. Mm-hmm. The V's lit, guys. They're back. They're back. The Tigers are back. <laughs> and they are 3-0. and And if you are looking at that dis- division, or district rather, in District 10, 3A Division One, and you're thinking, oh, it's Cameron Yost. Watch out for Rockdale and watch out for Troy. It's a really good district. TCU, certainly a team to watch. I still don't know if they figured out the quarterback thing. Don't think they have. But <laughs> Darius Anderson went nuts, and that defense is going to keep them in every single game. Their team certainly keeping on. If they can just get something from the quarterbacks. Anything. Anything. Literally. you got to make what? a decision by now. Why also, don't we? <laughs> also true. We need to stop playing two you quarterbacks. Can't, you can't keep yeah. playing two quarterbacks and expect there to be like a clear-cut right. decisiveness in the quarterback Here's position. an idea. Yeah. Why don't we just make the entire play now Jalen Rager? <laughs> <laughs> just snap it to him. Pull a Jordan Whittington. Just pull a Jordan Whittington. Just snap it to him. Uh, and Abilene Cooper. Uh, Aaron Roan has the Cougars 3-0 and off to a 3-0 start. They win the Crosstown Showdown. They beat Abilene. Big win for them. Three teams to worry about. Uh, I'm worried about Texarkana Liberty Ilo, and I had kind of grabbed a little bit of that stock beforehand, mm-hmm. before the season, because this is a program, this is a team that was the, the, not up to their standard last year, but were super, super, um, like, ravaged by injuries. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no real excuse now. Uh, that is really, uh, the, I'm worried about them 0-3. And you, I mean, look at their schedule coming up: Atlanta, Argyle, Waco, La Vega, ah, <laughs> and then really could be 0 six. Longview, Spring Hill, and then uh, Pleasant Grove. <laughs> Worried about them. Yep. Texas Tech. Uh, that was not good. Nope. Um, I'm willing to give them a one week pass, but like that was a not good result against a Arizona team that I'm more convinced than ever is not very good. Right. Plain and simple. Uh, and finally, um, Mesquite Poteet is mm-hmm. also 0 and three. And uh, even with Seth McGowan and company, the, the Pirates are struggling a little bit. Those are three teams to worry about. And that is Monday morning fallout. We did it.